What's up, good people? What's up, good people? It's your boy, Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr. Coming to you for another episode. Uh, the, not just another episode, I'm sorry. The 100th episode of the Author Showcase brought to you by the National, I don't know if y'all can see that through the, kind of, kind of acting up, through the National Black Unity News newspaper, um, which is a newspaper uh, that was created uh, for us, by us, and, and actually um, promoting unity in our communities. We are keeping the dream alive. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? I love that. I love that saying. But that's what we do with the Black Unity, um, the National Black Unity News newspaper. And here in the Author Showcase, we bring you um, authors that have a mission, a message, a movement, um, and motive, hopefully motivate you in order to be able to see the great things that they're doing uh, in the community, for the community, and about the community. And this episode is going to be no different. It's no different than any other one that we have because it is your boy, Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr. And my guest who is going to, who we're going to be speaking with in just one second and in a couple minutes, I'm going to allow him to be able to talk and tell us, introduce himself to us and tell us who he is. Um, and then we're going to get into this powerful conversation that we're going to have uh, right here on the Author Showcase. Um <clears throat> On the 100th episode, I'm excited about that. Actually, 100th episode. So, um, I I wanted this 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 young man. Uh, I came across him or was introduced to him through a, a friend of uh, through a business associate friend of mine. He said, "I got a young man, young brother that has a a powerful message and a powerful story." And, and I want to introduce you to him. And he said he has a book and I went to his um, his book launch, had an phen absolute phenomenal time, um, had a chance to meet him in person, but then also beforehand to actually talk to him um, just about the, the great things that he's doing. Um, he talked a little bit about that night. He talked about his, his journey uh, that he is on, that he has been on. And I think it's a, a phenomenal story. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight and talk about all the other great things that he has. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna have him introduce himself and, and tell us a little bit about who he is uh, and then we'll get into our conversation. But I wanna introduce to everyone, um, brother Elijah Lewis. Um, who is going to tell us uh, just a little bit about um, who he is, and I want to welcome him to the Authors Showcase. Good evening, my brother. How are you? I'm doing good. How about you, Dr. McKenzie? Hey, I'm doing awesome, brother. Thank you for taking time out to, to come and talk to us and be here on the Authors Showcase, um, and I want to show this out. I, hopefully, I can't. I, don't, I mean, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or the folks will be able to see it, but I'm holding up, yeah, it's, it's, I may have to take it off just before I leave, the current issue of the author showcase and his book is right here, smack dab in the middle. You probably can't see it, um, but I'll take, I'll take my, um, my background off so you can see it before we leave, uh, before we go. But um, I, I want everybody to kind of know uh, who, who you are. Just tell us, a, start off, we'll start off by telling just a little bit about who you are and, and then we'll get into your, um, We'll get into uh, the conversation that we're going to have tonight. All right. Well, again, uh, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, and by the way, congrats on uh, 100 episodes of the Author Showcase. And again, uh, as Dr. McKenzie said, my name is Elijah Lewis. Uh, I am a, the author of uh, Your Jewels in Your Journey, Life Lessons for Each of Your Optimal Self. I'm also a motivational speaker as well. Uh, a little bit about my background. I am from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, of course, I went to high school, a uh, proud 2014 graduate of Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. Um, I'm also a graduate of the illustrious uh, Tuskegee University. Um, I got my uh, bachelor's in mechanical engineering with a minor in material science and engineering. And I'm also a proud uh, Morgan State grad. Uh, I got my master's in cybersecurity. Uh, currently, I'm working with NAVC, which is the Navy down in Indian Head, Maryland. So that's a little bit about me uh, as a professional. 
Um, but yeah, pretty much uh, down to earth kind of person. And uh, my main purpose, my, my main purpose in life is I just want to see everyone win and, and be their optimal self. So uh, that's pretty much a little bit about me uh, in a nutshell. Doc, uh, uh, you, you're muted. I, I can't hear you. Right this time. Okay, that usually works better when I'm, when I'm not muted. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to start the conversation off this way, and, and this is usually how I um, start the conversation off with the authors. What got you started in writing? What made you say, you know what, I want to take pen to paper uh, and say that I think that I have something to say? Was there something that was there a trigger in, in uh, getting you to be able to start writing, or is that something that you've kind of always, always uh, wanted to do? Well, I actually, no, I tell people I, I never had any plans of being an author. I just didn't think that was something that I could do. Uh, only thing, I, and plus, at the time I, I became an author, I hadn't written anything major since my scholarly project for grad school. So um, growing up, it wasn't a paper for class. It, I, I really wasn't writing, you know, poems or songs or whatever like that, because I just didn't think I could do it. Um, what got me into it, though, was when I went to a Black Empowerment Expo down in Waldorf, and uh, um, I went, and you know, my publisher was there, and he asked me did I have any uh, uh, interest in being an author, because I bought two of his books, and he's an author, motivational speaker himself. And uh, honestly, I, I didn't have plans to do that. I, like I said, I didn't think that's something I could do, but. I thought about it and we talked and I thought this was a good idea. And I started thinking about what are some of the experiences that I've been through in life and what was the meaning behind that lesson? Because I believe we all go through things in our journey for a reason and there's a lesson behind that or a jewel behind that. So what better way to kind of share some of my experiences that I've been through that a lot of people don't know about, but at the same time offer some guidance for people who or maybe lost on their journey because I know what that's like. Um, I always think back, you know, really around when I was in high school, um, the future wasn't as bright for me. Um, I graduated with a 2.58 GPA. Um, it got so bad for me personally. I, I remember my dad asked me, what, did I, what would I do if I did, did not end up going to college? And I told him, I said, I don't know, dad. I guess I'll, I'll just go work at Walmart, uh, you know, just trying to find something that sticks. But... <laughs> But as I've gotten older uh, to where I am now, um, I realize that that's a feeling that I don't want anyone to go through. And like I said earlier, what better way to try to give some inspiration to people by telling people you know, my story, but also giving them some guidance along the way that not only can you find yourself again on your journey, you can do the things that you're meant to do moving forward. Wow, man! That so so. Tell tell me this, and 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 I and I see that in you. <laughs> now, what's the what the, the what's the difference between when you first you know kind of went through that process with you, you know having a conversation with that, and then now that you are an author and that you are you know a speaker, what's that? What's that? What does that difference look like to you, or how does that feel to you? Well, it's, it's an amazing feeling, and you know, I, I realized that it's like I was saying. You know, you, you know, you only can, you, you know, the only way is up. When you're at your lowest point, all you can do is go up. And for me, I look back, and it's just, and I didn't quite understand how bad it was getting for me. But I think the beauty behind this process is it allows you to reflect and understand what you're going through, because that that was a very tough and honestly depressing time for me, just losing confidence in myself because I had always done pretty well in school. So to get to that point was a really a ultimate low for me. Um, and I talk about it in my book because it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I didn't really know about it then like I know about it now, but the way my dad described it was I was giving the Theo speech from the Cosby show. If you, anybody's watched that very first episode of the Cosby show when Theo is giving uh, his speech to his dad, I just want to get a regular job, be like regular people. 
And, you know, Dr. Huxtable goes through the Monopoly money and, and says, you know, suppose you just, you know, just slide by. He's like, you got to find a job and you got to do all these things. And, of course, the funny part, the last part is, like, you plan to have a girlfriend? He's like, for sure. Takes all the money out of his hands. Like, he's like, that's regular people. So, you know, for me, I, 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 I it's just I really it's such an ultimate low point. But I thank him because he was a huge motivator. Um, I think I saw something on Facebook recently, too. Like, just because someone is pushing you doesn't mean they're trying to mess with me. A lot of times, that's genuine love. And I think for my father to see the potential that I had in me when I couldn't see it in myself is a humongous blessing. Um, because now I can just look back and see how far I've come. And a huge part of that is because of him. And it is kind of shocking too about the whole being an author and motivational speaker too, because when I think about it, he really was my motivational speaker. He was really motivating me to, as you like to say, Dr. McKenzie, you know, get, get in the lab and, you know, work on myself and become better. And it's also interesting too, because I say this as a joke, because, but it was kind of true too. He said, you know, in, in high school, it's like, you know, he looked at my right, he said, Elijah, he's like, man, you're, to be honest with you, man, your, your writing sucks, man. It's just, it's just like, it's just like, oh man, it's just so. But it was true, and you know, through him, I've gotten much better in my writing, and I thank him for that because he might say that's kind of harsh, but like I said earlier, I think he really saw that I was not being my optimal self, and that I needed that push and that drive to be better. And so, really, in a lot of ways. He was the motivational speaker that I needed in, in my life because I think we all need motivation at times. You know, you don't have to necessarily have to be a, a quote motivational speaker unquote. You know, anybody can provide motivation. So I think for him, you know, him doing that for me was a, a tremendous blessing, hands down. Yeah, and, and I, you're you're absolutely right. I do believe that we all need to have some someone or something that motivates us, whether it is an individual, whether it's a book, whether it's a, a, a um, you know someone that or something that we might watch on YouTube, something that that gives us that inspiration that we need to want to do better and be better uh, in what it is that we're in life, because we can always we can always be better at what it is that we're doing, and and as a as an author as a writer um you know you look you look back and you can I can I know for me I can honestly see the progression of my writing and how my writing got better at the more that as I've as I've written I've written books and 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 all of those things that have come along so so you're so right about that let, let me ask you this if you had to use one word to describe your writing style what would that one word be I would have to say inspirational um, because. What is I it? Say it again. Uh, inspirational. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the reason I said it is because I, I was just taking, you know, the experiences that I went through and just trying to convey that to my readers that a lot of people tend to go through these situations and maybe they don't want to talk about it or maybe they're too ashamed to talk about it. But it's, it's a way to show people that they're not alone in any particular challenge that they go through. Because I have had people, you know, tell me about, you know, common uh, struggles that they've had, you know, after they read my book. And the reason why I say inspirational too is because I just felt like what better way to write from than my own experience, you know. And I'm not trying to sound conceited or anything when I say that, but I just didn't know really, really know how to write, you know, a fiction or a fictional book or something creative where I could just take a, something imaginative and just put it on paper. I just felt the best inspiration was just to go through life experiences and, and put it on paper and see how that inspires the reader uh, once they uh, read the book. Got you, got you, got you. Now, now what, um, what made you um, want to write the, the you write your book your jewels are in your journey what made you what made you want to write your story what was it that made you that inspired you to, to be able to write your story well i actually in addition to what i've said you know about telling about my story uh, experiences and you know also just showing people that they can bounce back from certain challenges i, I think it was also very therapeutic for me too um and i think i've found that very interesting 
very beautiful in writing, um, especially when you write from your own experiences, that it allows you to understand, like I said earlier, what you've been through, but more importantly, show you where you're going and how you have progressed. So the real inspiration for me was, I guess, a sense of clarity, um, a sense of guiding people to be in the right direction on their journey, because I tell people that we all have a journey to travel on, but we just have to have the right knowledge and perspective about how we go on our journey to be our best self. Um, because if we don't have that, then it's hard to accomplish anything on your journey. If you don't know where you've been, how are you gonna know where you're going? So that's or some that's some of the reasoning of to why I, I wrote the book. But mainly, I think for us, like I said earlier, a sense of clarity and also a sense of inspiration and guidance uh, for people who are trying to navigate navigate themselves as they go about their journey. Yeah, and and that's a, so important. And I think to me by you telling, and I say this all the time to to authors or authors that I've that I've worked with, or um, and they were telling their story. I said by telling your story, you give someone else the ability to be able to live theirs, and, yeah, and that's the, where they get to see. Wow, this is like you said, you got clarity. This can actually give them clarity by reading what the experiences that you've had to show them some direction. Because some people, all they need is direction. They don't know how to get out of something or move through something, and and uh, and and so, and a book like yours can give them, hey, this is you know this is what I needed to do. This is exactly what I'm going through, or this is something similar to what I'm going through, and I can use that to be able to give me the structure or guidance that I need in order to be able to get through. The, the 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 task that I'm trying the journey that I'm on my journey that I that I'm on and be able to get through it so I, I like that man I like that you said that can you t tell us a little bit about the book and what the book is about um and and why why um why your story is is different from somebody else's well, it's mainly about um like I said you have ten life lessons or jewels that I've felt were very important for us all to have on our journey. And the ultimate goal is that you have that knowledge and perspective that will lead you to your optimal self. But also what's important to know is that not only are life lessons jewels, but people are jewels. In fact, my favorite jewel is the last one, which is the greatest jewel of all is knowing that you are a jewel yourself. And like I said earlier, it, it starts about knowing who you are because once you know who you are, you know where to go moving forward. I, I tell people that once you know who you are as a person and the greatness that's inside of you, the rest of those jewels will fall right into place. And through your action, you'll be able to live all those jewels because you know who you are. It's kind of like how um, our ancestors uh, said, you know, back in ancient Kemet, you know, man, no, man or woman, know thyself. So you have to know who you are first to have the rest of the jewels fall into place. But like I said, the the, the ultimate concept of the book is taking these life lessons, applying it in your life to be your optimal self. And hopefully also once you inspire, not inspire, but once you uh, get to the level where you are your optimal self, hopefully that'll spread to the next person uh, that comes behind you um, and gives them a sense, of, a sense of, of a picture of what being your optimal self is like. Yeah. Man, man, you you dropping some really good, um, good stuff here. What do you want the reader to come away with once they've once they've read that last page, once they've read that read that last word? What do you want them to then come away with knowing after they've read your book? I would say that they have the power to write their own story. I mean, mm -hmm. just because you're going through a tough time now doesn't mean it's going to always be there. Um, you have the ability to write the chapters in your life. Like I tell everybody, we all have a story to tell. So it's up to us to think about what do we want our story to be when it's all said and done. And the journey is an evolving process. You know, we're all human beings. We're not meant to be perfect, but we are meant to be uh, progressing in life. So... Mm -hmm. The ultimate goal is that you have the power and the greatness inside of you. The question is, what are you going to do with it? Um, 
I tell people when it comes to, even though my book is, what makes my book different, by the way, is I try to take inspiration from various sources. So I try to give my experience, but I also want to tie it into, you know, for example, you know, since it's Black History Month, you know, our ancestors that came before us, or, you know, I listen, I'll try to tie in music to the book that speaks to certain jewels. Just trying to capture the reader's interest because I don't want the book to be just a typical self-help book, you know, where one's like, well, I've seen this before and I tried reading this book and it didn't work for me. I just try to make it as different as I can that it can resonate with the reader moving forward to the point where the reader's thinking to myself, the book is so good, I don't want to put it down. Um, but like I said, to, to wrap that question up, um, it's all about the vision that you have for yourself. And like I said, the end game is that you know how to navigate your life to be your best self. And even though I, I don't try to preach a religious message in my book, I think a scripture that really stands out to me that really I think I try to encapsulate in my book is uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11, where you know, God says, you know, I have plans for you, uh, a future for you, uh, an expected end. I, I honestly think, you know, the Most High has designed us to be great and has plans for us to do that. But like I said, the question is, what are we going to do with that? You know, because the Bible also says faith without works is dead. So we can have the belief that we're meant to be great and do all these great things, but we have to do the work behind that in order to achieve that greatness. Yeah, yeah, you're so right. And I think a lot of people they 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 forget or they 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 don't think about the work that has to be done in order to be able to become great or to be great and to navigate things. You you can't just sit back. Life isn't going to just allow you to just sit back and and you know and let let it you know let things happen. If you want thing, if you want greatness to happen, you have to be willing to work for it, put that time in, learn. They're gonna be they're gonna be obstacles that come. Uh, there's no one who has become great that did not have obstacles that they didn't that they didn't have to overcome. It's just not mm -hmm. one. If you if you find one, let me know. <laughs> Same here. Let me know they, too. Because <laughs> if they if they're telling you that they became great and were great without having an, any obstacles or anything like that, then then they aren't the, honestly they aren't telling you the truth. They they right. really aren't, and they're trying right. to they're trying to sell you something. They're trying, yeah. trying to sell you a dream or something yeah. like that to make you think that that everything is going to be rosy, everything is going to be you know uh, um, you know easy breezy. It, everything says it's, it's going to be easy breezy. You know what I mean? But I want you to talk about my next question is for you is can you talk about what does the title your jewels are in your journey mean to you? What does that mean to you? When I say that title to you? Um, I say it, what it means to me is that you're finding something very unique in your journey. Because a jewel is something that stands out, that ca captures your attention. And when you go about your journey, the goal is that you're learning things along the way. You know. You know, you're not supposed to be, as I said earlier, you're supposed to be progressing as you go forward. And I think when you find a jewel, the, the, what it means to me is that that's what's going to allow you to be better moving forward. And without those jewels, it's kind of hard to, to find that. So when someone says, you know, like you said, what, what does your jewels in your journey mean to me? It's either the life lesson or a person that had an impact on you that made you be better as you move forward on your journey. Mm -hmm. Do do me a favor, man. Well, I, and I don't I don't want to just screw, I don't want to just go pa, pa, go bypass that really quickly. I want you to say that again for those that are listening, those that are watching for me, if you can. Yeah, I mean, like I said, when I when I think of your jewels in your journey, it's either a life lesson or a jewel. I'm sorry, a life lesson or a person that had an impact on you to be your best self as you go about your journey. Um, because that's what I want people to understand too. Like, it's not just the life lessons. Like I said, there are people that will come into your life that are going to make an impact on you. Now, right. unfortunately, it can also be negative too because the sad reality is some people 
will not always make the best impact in your life. But, but again, as I talk about progression, we learn from those mistakes. because That's one of the jewels in my book is that you can learn from your mistakes and try to make those changes to become better. But at the same time, I also say have a great role model in my book because that role model is a jewel that can help you be your best self moving forward. So, you know, we got to factor out both sides. But when I speak on the, the people aspect of jewels, these are people who have a positive impact. And you just maybe make sure I, need, I need to make sure I put that connotation on it. That in order for a person to be a jewel, they have to have a positive impact on you in your journey. Because if they're if they have a negative impact on you, then that person is is not a jewel. They're, as uh, Maya Angelou said, you know, when a person shows you who they are, believe them. So yeah, that, that's not a jewel if they're having a negative impact on you. But they're having a positive impact on you and showing you how to be better and giving you the wisdom to do that, then you need to definitely cherish that jewel because that's that's almost like a godsend right there. So yeah, we have to cherish not only the life lessons, but the people that come into our lives as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we have to understand too that they are and I come to this when I when I think of I call it my circle of impact when it comes to people that you have in your circle and, and that are those jewels. Because I had a conversation with um with, with one of my friends last week and we were talking about not only is it about having those people in your circle, but when they give you um, advice when they give you knowledge or information that they share with you that you one that you listen but then two you take that information and you process it and you see how it best fits you because it doesn't necessarily have to be um, it always be the best thing for you to do but list by listening to them you have a you gain a clear understanding of how they handle the situation and then you can assess hey is this the direction that I believe that I should be going in is this direction that you know is this something that I think is going to make me better on the other side of it I always always look at it like that does this make me Absolutely. better on the other side of it because if um, by listening to them, and that goes for anybody, that's your parents, that's your, your mother, your father, your cousin, your, your, your sisters, anybody that wants to give you advice. Yeah, you can give me a, give me a, give me advice. The ultimate decision is mine at the end of the day, and my decision has to be or should be based on what I believe is going to be best for me on the other side of that decision. Absolutely. You know? you know, those things. So I, I like that. I, I want you to talk about if you can, and we, we're not gonna, we're not gonna delve into all of the the lessons that you talk about in the book, because we want people to go buy the book. And we're gonna tell you how you can buy the book uh, at, at, uh, once we finish. But can you give us three lessons, three lessons from the, the book? Um, and, and talk about it from the perspective of getting your jewels out of your journey. How can one give, give them three ways for somebody that's just starting to say that they come to you and they say, Elijah, I, I, I want to be able to begin that journey. How do I, mm -hmm. what are the first three steps that you would tell them that they need to do in order to be able to get started on, on that and get the jewels out of the journey? Well, I think the first one, I think we talked about some of them. I think the first one would be definitely just, is who are you? Like, who are you as a person? Um, mm. And I say that because, like I said, if you don't know who you are, it's, it's kind of hard to figure out where you want to go. So I think you have to take some time and reflect on what you are, who, are you, who you are as a person. And once you figure that out, I think that's step one. I think step two is also reflect, uh, reflect how you got to this point where you are right now. So think about the mistakes, you know, some of the good experiences that you had. You know, how did you get to this point where you are right now in your journey? I would say that's step two. I think the final step is, okay, what do I want to do differently if I'm not happy where I am in my journey? Or if I am happy where I am with my journey, what can I do to even make the journey better moving forward? I think once you figure out who you are, figure out how you got to where you are right now, and then the last one, uh, figure out how you can either make the journey better if it's good right now or what changes you would make if the, if you're not happy where you are right now as you go forward in your journey. So it's almost yeah. like you have to deal with your past, present, and your future uh, when you talk about your journey. I like that. I like the way you, I like the way you put that because that, that's a, and that's a great approach to uh, to looking at it, um, my, from a business perspective, uh, one of my business associates she called it the before, the during, and the after. 
Mm. What, what, what did you do before? What are you doing now? And then what do you need to do in the future in order to be able to make it? So I like the way that you put that because if you if you answer these three questions, like you said, who are you? If you know who you are, you can you can certainly know where you're going. And and something that I've learned over this last several weeks that I've really been honing in on is having your personal values system, having a personal value system. Yeah. Those are those core principles that you stick to that define who you are. They give you your purpose and it gives you your identity. I know you talk about that, you know, having purpose and having identity and, and understanding where those, how, uh, how those play a part in your life. Because if you can, if you make your choices and decisions based on, on those two, the, the question of who you are. And, and you make the make it on and you reflect on, hey, these are the things that I did, you know, that I did well or that I didn't do so well. And, and I can understand what went into those decisions and why I made those decisions. Then you can do that last part. What do I do differently? What other, what choices, what different choices do I make or can I make in order to be able to get me to where it is that I want to be or what can I do better? Um, Absolutely. Cause I, yeah, because I, I know... Um, this is, I say this all the time, if you're going to be better by the end of the year than you were at the beginning of the year, which is one of the things that I always talk about, you have to understand, you have to know where it is that you want to be by the end of the year. Who are you by the end of the year? What, like what you were saying, if I know who I want to be by the end of the year or where I'm heading, that's where I'm heading, then every choice that you make this year should be leading you to that point. Absolutely. And asking yourself, does this choice move me towards who it is that I say that I want to be at the yeah, end of, by absolutely. the end of the year. You know. Yeah. So I, I I love this man. This is this is this is really good. And a, a lot of people just to talk about number two, <laughs> a, a lot of people don't want to reflect, man. A lot of people yeah. <laughs> talk, yeah. talk about that a little bit about why people they, they get afraid when when they have to reflect and look at themselves and, and the choices that they've made. I, I think the number one aspect, of, well, I think it's two aspects, and I'm kind of learning this. Um, particularly, I think a lot of I think a lot of psychologists and therapists will talk about this. A lot of a lot of people, especially if they've done some bad decisions or toxic behaviors. This is something I'm learning. I'm not a, 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 a therapist or a, a psychologist, but the two things that stand out to me, I think, is that a lot of people just don't want to deal with the shame. And a lot of people don't want to deal with accountability either. To look in the mirror and say, you know what, I did these things wrong. It was my fault. I should have done this better. For some people, their ego just won't let them do that. And so instead of allowing mm -hmm. themselves to make those changes and grow, they run from it. And that doesn't allow them to be better moving forward. So I think that's the, the aspect of why I think a lot of people don't want to reflect because a lot of times, they feel like it might be either too embarrassing or humiliating to, to look back at the mistakes, or they, they just think like, you know what, I just can't take any accountability on that. That's someone else's fault. It's, I'll point the finger and say, you know, you did this, you did that. And it just is, it's, it's a lot easier for them. But the problem with doing that is you, you can't learn that way, you know? So unless you take the time to deal with the mistakes that you made looking back at your journey, then you can't you can't get better moving forward. You know, I, I I'm gonna say this. I, I think what we just talked about the last minutes. If there's an example of how I would say that's described, and I even talk about it in my book because I'm a I'm a I was born in 1996, so I'm a 90s kid. Uh, and of course, one of my favorite uh, movies from my childhood is The Lion King. And I think mm -hmm. that scene in The Lion King where Simba's talking to Mufasa in the clouds and talking about he has to go back and take his place in the circle of life. And of course, uh, Rafiki's giving him this lesson. And uh, after he hits him in the head with a stick, you know, Simba says like, dang, what was, like, what was that for? And Vicky goes, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. He goes, yeah, but it still hurts. He goes, yes, the past can hurt. He said, the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. So, you know, so... For all, the, for all you 90s kids, you know, go back and watch The Lion King. That's a perfect example of what we're talking about right there. And it is so true because a lot of a lot of movies have, uh, and I guess that art imitating life type of thing to to them when you when you um, you know, when you 
participate in, or when you think about them and you look at the stories that they that they do tell. Um, and, and Lion King is a is a great example of that. About uh, if we take that and use it as our life and in life, I mean, from all of the the lessons that that um, you know that the Mufasa taught Simba, and even the um, uh, what, what I don't know what what he's was he a water buffalo that talked he was the one that said or was it the was it the monkey that talked about Akuna Matata no worries no oh that was the warthog and the uh, okay yeah the warthog yeah Timon yeah. and Puma that was they were the ones who came up with that yeah. Yeah, you know, but but when we or, or even the the one the the, the scenario the scene that you just talked about being hit over the head with a stick, yeah, sometimes life is does hit you over the head yes. with a stick, and you're like, oh my god, you know, and and what are you going to do? The the question is, what are you going to do when you get hit over the head with the stick? Mm -hmm. Are you are you going to learn? Are you going to learn from it? Are you going to grow from it? Are you going to say, hey, I'm not going to get hit by that stick again because I know what right. it, that feels like and I don't want to have that feeling again, man. Right. So, and if you notice that the second time he tried to hit someone with the stick, he ducked. He's like, he's like okay, like, you ain't getting me hit with that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. So I, 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 I love that. And I love that you, how you were able to, you know, you were able to, to talk about that and, and how important that is for us um, in this journey, because this journey that we're, that we're on is not easy. You know, but if we to your to your book, if we can find the jewels in the journey, yes. then 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 we're able to to me, um, we were able to pull on the jewels in the journey and see those brights, those bright things. Because when I think of jewels, I think yeah. of something that's bright, shiny, something that has value to it, something mm -hmm. that that we that we can you know use use to be able to to gain from and, and everything like that as we go throughout as we go throughout life and everything like that. So, Absolutely, the, true. So let me. That, what what was the? I'm gonna ask you because this is your first book, right? Yes, sir. All right. I want you to tell me what was the what was the most difficult part about writing um, this book for you as a first time author? I, I, you know, honestly, I tell people I didn't have much, I didn't really have any writer's block, but I think the okay. hardest part of it was reflecting on some of those painful experiences in my journey. Um, because I think when you're young, it's, my, it's sometimes it's hard to resonate what you went through. But as you get older and you look back at it, sometimes you can understand what was going on at the time. Especially, like I said, the therapeutic aspect of writing for me has been, I've been able to find that clarity with those experiences. Um, of course, I, I'm not really trying to give the whole detail of the book, but this is just part of my journey. Uh, you know, I, it's really just, it was really just two experiences for me I thought were really the toughest. One, there was a period where um, I was really real close friends with somebody and we really, we stopped talking um, for about almost three years. Um, now, thankfully, we're on good terms now, but that was really tough, you know, losing a friendship with somebody you really care about. That was really tough. And the other experience that I would tell people is, uh, again, this is just part of the journey. It's not the whole journey, but there is a part of my journey where I talk about don't let other people put you in a box. And I share my experience of growing up in a cult, how tough that was for me. And so it's tough because you think as you get older that, oh, that's so far, that was so long ago, that trauma doesn't affect me. But if you don't really, I, I think if you don't take time to sit with some of those experiences, you, you never get to a place of healing and understanding. So it, it's tough to go back because a lot of times, this goes back, we just talked about a few minutes ago, you don't want to go back to those bad moments of, of having to reflect, but it does allow you to heal and get the understanding you need moving forward. And, you know, if it's not just from a book, maybe it can motivate you to maybe go into things, you know, like therapy or things of like that, because we all need healing from whatever we've been through in life, because we've all, we've all been through painful experiences. There's not a single person that's ever walked this earth that didn't go through some pain or some trauma, unfortunately. Right. But it's all about how do we understand that trauma, heal from it, become better, because the last thing we want to do is inflict that trauma on other people around us. Yeah, yeah, man. And 
if y'all if y'all not taking notes from what this young man is 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 telling you today, I'm sorry. I don't know what else. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, but I, I want you to talk a little bit about, if you can, um, some of the um, the impact that your book has had on those that have that, those that have read it. Have you gotten any kind of feedback um, as to you know as to, to the book and the, the impact that it's had on people so thus far? Absolutely, a, a lot. For the most part, it's it's been given great reviews. Um, like I said, I've had people share with me, you know, similar experiences that they've been through. Okay. Uh, like I like I said, you know, some people have shared with me that uh, they also, you know, unfortunately went through the pain of being in a cult. They've shared that. Some people have said, I think I had one person tell me about his struggles in school. You know, he he didn't do the 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 greatest when it came to his grades in school. So you know, I I, I am thankful that people are giving me positive feedback. And I really thank my elders when I get, po get positive feedback from them, and here's why. Because really, for my elders, I can understand a lot of them feel like that they may not necessarily need the book because they've lived their life, they've learned a lot more than I have because they've been here longer. But when I see them uh, take uh, enjoyment in the book and learn a lot from it and say how great it was for them that means a lot to me because i don't target a specific 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 excuse me specific audience for my book i try to reach whoever i can reach but when i i, I have my elders give me that feedback that means a lot because they really don't have to read that book they they can just say you know what young man i've, re I've lived my life hey i there's not much you can tell me at 27 and tell me tell me otherwise. But for, the, for for elders who are open to learning and always trying to get better, that that especially means a lot to me because they really don't have to do that. Yeah, and and that's the thing about you know those of us in in that are in the older generation and even older older generation is and, and I've learned I learned this since I was uh, I was younger. You should always be willing to listen and learn. You know, and Absolutely. that goes for, for both, you know, that goes for the older generation and the younger generation, because you can both, we should both be learning from each other as to, Absolutely. you know, to, to get better, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and it doesn't mean that, you know, the, yeah, because you are older, doesn't, yeah, you've had some experiences that I haven't had, and that's very true, and I can learn from you, just as you can learn from me being in the younger generation, and be able to pull some of the, those experiences that I, that I may have that you don't have now, or didn't have, that I'd have, and, and especially when it comes to the technology piece in this world, right. because <laughs> the technology piece is 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 those of you that are in in your generation y'all don't know anything but technology so yeah you, you yeah. didn't have to grow up with with you know with, with the beginning of the computers that that we grew up with we were there when that first really kind of started when the technology aspect of it started and, and we've been able to see how it has grown in leaps mm -hmm. and bounds and everything like that and so at least my generation the the generation out like my parents my grandparents, they they are a little more um, because they they grew up without it, so they they are in that mindset. Yeah, this is the way that we've always done it, but Absolutely. but be open to you know, hey, this is how we do it. Now your generation has to say, yeah, this is this is all we know, but yeah, I do need to know these other ways because this can benefit me too. Because because technology has a way of messing up. <laughs> and, yes, and, yep. and what happens when you can't operate with with when you when you have to operate without technology? Yeah, it's not and, if and, it's when. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, because you're you're so right. Because it is going to act up. <laughs> it, it really exactly. it really is. So yeah, that that's good. That's good. So what's next for you? Are you working on anything new? Do you have anything that's coming in 2024 that you that you that you're looking to do in 2024 2025? Yes, at some point I do start writing uh, my second book. Um, I'm still okay. getting some thoughts together on that. So there's not a, a timeline on it, but I do okay. have plans to write another book. Um, I, some of my plans uh, coming up, uh, I am going to be um, a uh, guest speaker on a uh, business roundtable meeting on uh, yeah, I Valentine's think I Day. I saw that. Yeah, you want to talk about that? Where How people can can um, can be a part of that or where, where they can go to um, to see it? 
I think they're going to be sending me the link on that because it's on Zoom. Okay. This is on that's on uh, Valentine's Day. I think the event okay. we're talking about is uh, I'm having a Black History Month event. At uh, for those of you in the Baltimore area, it's at uh, TNAP Holistic Wellness Center. Uh, it's going to be on February the 24th from 2 to 4, 4 p.m. Um, I'm bringing in three authors. Uh, two of them are actually uh, high school classmates of mine uh, who've written books. And the third person is actually uh, one of my high school classmates. It's her uh, fiance as well. So they're Going to be, I'm going to be uh, the moderator, ask them some questions about their book, about their journey, uh, kind of like what Dr. McKenzie is doing for me. And also I'll be interviewing the owner, I'm sorry, not the owner, the uh, founder of TNAC. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Uh, Dennis Asar uh, uh, Winkler. Um, so I'm also going to be interviewing him about uh, his bookstore, what led him to do that. So I'm still in the process of coming up with some questions uh, to do that. Um, but that's going to be my event. Uh, it's on um, it's on my, my social media. Uh, you can follow me at, at Melon King Eli, and that's where you'll find information on that uh, event. And also on March the 2nd, I'm going to be uh, speaking uh, at a uh, conference. It's going to be really about the effects of trauma uh, from slavery and how that affects our well-being. And I'll be talking about you know, the purpose of our vision uh in that regard so that's going to be in uh virginia on march the 2nd i'm going to be posting the flyer because i have it uh i got it today so i'll be posting it sometime this weekend but those are some of the events uh that i have lined up moving forward i actually have one more too uh, in april i'm going to register for a uh, book expo that someone was telling me about uh, in annapolis we're going to have a lot of authors and illustrators and uh, I'll be posting that uh, very soon as well. So, um, yeah, that's kind of some of the stuff I have uh, rocking and rolling so far in uh, 2024. Now, and that sounds good, man. Now, again, if someone's looking to have you come and speak um, or they want to purchase the book, where can it where can it go to? I want you to give your contact information one more time. Sure. So if you would like to purchase uh, your jewels in your journey, um, you can go to uh, you can go to two, to two ways. It'll take it'll take you to the same place. You can go to ElijahLewisEvents.com or you can go to YourJewelsInYourJourney.com slash home and you can order your copy. Uh, if you order from my website, I'll sign it to you. I'll sign it for you rather and I'll have it shipped to you. Uh, you should get there in a couple of days. Or you can also find it on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles as well. And if you'd like to get in contact with me about being a motivational speaker, um, the best way to do that, you can email me. My email is Elijah Lewis at your jewels or in your journey.com. Um, you can send me an email who you are. Um, if you go on my website as well on the services tab, you scroll to the bottom packages that I offer. So if you feel like that's a package that'll fit you and your audience, uh, uh, you can let me know there. And uh, definitely, uh, I would love to come out and speak to you. And your uh, whether it's your uh, your school, church, whatever organization that you have, and uh, definitely love to network and uh, meet you guys uh, in person. So that's Absolutely. that's pretty much how they can get in contact with me uh, with my book and my motivational speaker. Absolutely, and men's organizations too. This is a young brother that that you should definitely have on your list to be able to come and speak to you. The current issue, can y'all see that better now? <laughs> of the National <laughs> Black Unity News newspaper. This is the author's showcase that's inside of this current issue that is out right now. It is out right now. You can go to the www.tnbun.com. Uh, and check out the digital version, you can have the paper delivered right to your door for under $20. That's four issues. It's a quarterly mag. It's a quarterly newspaper. So you get it four times for under $20. Go to www.tnbun.com. Subscribe. You can go and also check out the, um, the uh, web, um, our uh, YouTube channel as well, which you can see all of our other uh, author showcases that we've had we at number 100, y'all. We at 100. 100 
uh, authors as uh, part of the showcase. Uh, I'm so elated that we've gotten to, to 100. I'm looking forward to the next 100 um, here, starting off the, the, the 2024 uh, with the 100th episode. So it's onward, upward, and forward. But don't forget, go. You can get also get Elijah's book, Elijah Lewis's book. You can go to one more time, Elijah, give them the, the, uh, the, where they can go and get a copy of the, the book at. Uh, yes, it's uh, ElijahLewisEvents.com or YourJewelsAreInYourJourney.com slash home. Or you can also find it on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles too. But we want you to go to his website first because we, yes. we yeah, yeah, because and the, and the benefit is you will get if you go to my website and get a signed copy. So for those of you who want to want uh, a signed copy, uh, please go to those uh, two websites and uh, it, it takes you to the same place. It's not different. But yeah, go to one of those two websites, uh, order your copy. I'll sign it for you. And, you know, I love to see where the journey takes you moving forward. And uh, as yes. I tell everybody, when I sign their book, uh, may you find many jewels on your journey and continue to be the jewel that you are. Absolutely, man. Well, Elijah, I want to thank you for for being with us uh, in another episode, our initial episode of 2024, but also our 100th episode that we have for the authors, uh, the author showcase in the National Black Unity News. It has been an honor. I told y'all the, the conversations are just absolutely phenomenal um, when we bring the authors here because there's so much more to them than just their books. It's so much more uh, to them than what they do. Than, than their message. They these the, the authors. I've had the the pleasure of of talking and having these conversations with these authors, and each and every time I grow from from the experience that we have with each other and having these conversations, but just getting to know them on a uh, on a broader level too. So it is it is my pleasure, my honor to be able to bring them to you and and to be able to give them the platform because y'all are not gonna get this everywhere else. You trust me, you will not get this everywhere else where you get an in-depth conversation to be able to talk with authors who have a mission, who have a message, uh, who, are mo who have a movement or, or are truly motivated in what they do. So again, Elijah, thank you for, for being with us. We we'll appreciate y'all for tuning in. This has been the 100th episode of the Authors Showcase with the National Black Unity News and Dr. Leroy McKenzie Jr., the Impact Builder. We'll talk to y'all soon. Have a great day. Yep, have a good one. All right. You good, Elijah? Oh, okay. I got, I got to turn it. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you a call in a second, okay? Okay. All right. Well, thanks again, okay. Dr. McKenzie, for the interview. Uh, I have definitely enjoyed it and uh, definitely uh, look forward to uh, sharing this with everybody. And uh, just thank you again for the opportunity. I definitely appreciate all that, you, that you've done. Absolutely, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate you. No problem. Same here. Have a good one. All right. One. Okay, you too.